SpaceX recently launched their Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station using their iconic Merlin engine. For now, SpaceX has developed an entirely new Raptor engine to realize an even further goal, Mars. And it starts with a new kind of fuel that's not only less dense, but also more efficient and eco-friendly. So how does this new fuel compare to ones used in the past, and what does it mean for sending humans to other planets? In terms of the mixture needed to launch a rocket, we need two things a fuel, or what's also known as a propellant, and an oxidizer to release oxygen. In 1926, legendary engineer Dr. Robert Goddard used a combination of gasoline and liquid oxygen to launch the very first rocket. It was a great starting point, but as better mixtures were developed, gasoline really lost its popularity. Because when considering the safety of a crew, it's just an all-around bad idea to have an extremely volatile substance as your main propellant. Now let's jump to 1981 when manned space shuttles started using liquid hydrogen to power their acceleration into orbit. In combination with an oxidizer like liquid oxygen, you've got the fuel that launched over 130 shuttles. When burned, this combination actually yields the highest specific impulse of any known rocket fuel. Specific impulse is a measure of how effectively the energy content within the propellant actually is converted into thrust. So we can basically think of this as a rocket's fuel economy, similar to what you find when your car shop. Knowing the efficiency of the propellant actually helps us to calculate just how far we can go. But a major drawback of using liquid hydrogen is its density. With a relatively low density of only 70 grams per liter, this requires engineers to use much bigger fuel tanks than they would use for higher density fuels like kerosene, which was the fuel that brought astronauts to the moon back in the Apollo era. So having a propellant with a higher density means a smaller fuel tank, a lighter rocket, and the ability to go further distances. Fast forward another 20 years to the 2000s, where Russia's RD-180 engine and the SpaceX Merlin engine utilize a combination of RP-1 and liquid oxygen. And RP-1 is really just a highly refined form of kerosene. This is mainly used for its incredibly high density of about 806 grams per liter, making RP-1 the ideal fuel to pack as much power as possible into a smaller fuel tank. And with a boiling point of over 420 degrees Kelvin, it's also really good at withstanding heat increases that you see during launch. A higher boiling point also means less installation is needed for the fuel tank, which means more space for your fuel and a lighter rocket. But RP-1 has some drawbacks that are leading SpaceX scientists to look at a different propellant, which could be used specifically for Mars exploration. Enter the SpaceX Raptor engine and its next generation propellant. This engine uses a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen to create what is, in my opinion, the perfect mixture for a reusable vehicle on Mars. Not only is this an efficient fuel, but it can easily be created using resources that we can find on the rare planet. And this is great because one of SpaceX's main goals is to create a system that can take humans to Mars and back. Both methane and CO2 could be extracted from the atmosphere using solar power, and water could be mined near the surface of Mars using wells. And when compared to RP-1, methane not only has a higher specific impulse and the cooler combustion temperature, but it also prevents coking, which is the buildup of deposits in the engine. Preventing coking is a more eco-friendly approach because it allows the same engine to be used over and over again while not depositing toxic chemicals into the atmosphere. Now, we've never sent humans to Mars before. We've sent a ton of robotic missions there, but never actual humans. And now SpaceX is making it even easier. As recently as August 2020, SpaceX's Raptor engine passed a major milestone in their engine development process when their chamber pressure reached 330 bar without exploding. This beats out the previous record held by the Soviet Union's RD-701 engine and SpaceX's Merlin engine. To me, this is an absolutely incredible accomplishment because it could be the foundation for the interstellar travel that we've all been waiting for. Hey everyone, I'm Kenny Harris, a satellite engineer and one of Seeker's new hosts, I've always been in love with space and engineering, so I'm extremely excited to be able to share my interest with you as a new member of the Seeker family. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want more engineering news like this, go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Seeker.